Hey everybody, today I'm here to talk to you about a uh, method of integration that we call integration by the method of partial fractions. So um, we use partial fractions when we have a rational function that is difficult to otherwise integrate. Um, before I actually show you how the method of partial fractions looks, let's go ahead and take a look at a problem so you can get a feel for it when this might be useful. So here's our, um, here's our problem we're looking at here. This is the integral of x minus 13 over uh, 2x squared minus 7x plus 3. Now, what's difficult here is that I have a rational expression. I don't have a nice, easy, straightforward antiderivative that I can use. And you'll notice that even though I'd like to use a u substitution, for instance, let u be the denominator, and hopefully the uh, derivative of the denominator appears in the numerator. That would be a, a really nice situation. In this case, the derivative of this does not appear in the numerator. It's not going to work out. Integration by parts won't work. U substitution won't work. So we have to try something else. And what we're going to try is something that re-expresses this, uh, um, uh, this fraction, this rational expression, as a sum of two more simple rational expressions. OK, let me show you what I mean. So here's the statement about partial fractions. If f of x is equal to the ratio of p of x over q of x, where p and q are polynomials, and the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. And if the denominator can be written as a product of distinct linear factors, what that means, uh, distinct linear factors, it's factorable, and each factor is simply a linear part, um, and there's no repeated uh, uh, factor. We'll talk about that in a minute. Then f of x can be written as a sum of rational functions with distinct linear denominators. It's, this is a hard thing to write down. It's actually a method that I, you need to write this down so you have it somewhere. But um, the method is much easier to illustrate than it is to explain in words. Right? Uh, that all said, it's not a terribly easy uh, method to use in the first place. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to try to re-express this rational function and then integrate the re-expression. So we'll start off. I'm just going to rewrite the expression without the integrand. There we go. So what I need to do is I need to re-express this as a product of linear pairs. So uh, as a product of two uh, rational functions. So x is less than x squared. That's the first thing. And I should be able to factor the denominator. So I'm going to rewrite this. The numerator is going to be x minus 13 still. I'm going to see if I can factor the denominator into two distinct linear expressions. So I'm going to have a 2x and an x, um, and if I do a 3 here, then uh, and they're both negative, then I've got it. Okay, So that's a factorization of 2x squared minus 7x plus 3. I can factor the denominator. Notice that I have two uh, linear expressions on the bottom, two linear uh, terms, and I don't have a square on either, simply meaning that 2x minus 1 only appears once. 3x, 3 minus, sorry, x minus 3 only appears once. So what I can do is there is, this is saying that there is a way to write this um, as two different uh, expressions. So here's what I'm going to write. I'm going to rewriting x minus 13. I'm rewriting this as the factored form down below. Okay. And I can rewrite this as two different fractions. And each fraction has one of the denominators. 2x minus 1 over here, and x minus 3 over here, and some number a and some number b. So this is the first step with, with partial fractions. We factor the denominator, <clears throat> and we make an equation of the original expression equaling the two new denominators. Okay, And knowing that there's some number that's going to make this true, and some number that's going to make it true over here as well, a and b. So now what I need to do is I need to figure out what numbers a and b will work so that the sum of these two fractions equals the one on the left. It's a little bit like undoing a common denominator, basically. OK, so here's what I need to do. I have an equation here, and I'm going to go ahead and turn this into, I'm going to get rid of all the fractions. And to do that, I'm going to multiply both sides by 2x minus 1 times x minus 3. So I'm multiplying both sides by the denominator of the left. What that's going to leave on the left is x minus 13. And on the right, a 
and I'll write it out this time. A times 2x minus 1 times x minus 3 over 2x minus 1. And over here, b times 2x minus 1, x minus 3, over x minus 3. Okay? So far, so good, right? What's happening here is it's really important we have every step written down. Okay? What's happening here is that I'm going to have an expression that's x minus 13 equals those go away, those go away. a times x minus 3 x minus 13 on the left, pardon me, plus b times 2x minus 1. Okay, let me go ahead and open up this, a new slide here. Okay, so now what we have to do is try to find values for a and b. Well, one thing that always spooked me about this next step is uh, it took me a, real, a while to really understand um, this next step. So let me explain it to you a little bit slowly. And that is that this expression is true for all values of x. Okay, So it's true for any particular value of x that I might choose. And so the trick here is I'm going to solve for a and solve for b by choosing particular values of x. So for instance, I'm going to use x equals 3. So I'm going to let x equals 3, I'm going to substitute x equals 3 into this equation and solve for b. I'm choosing x equals 3 because that causes this factor to go to 0. So let's do it. 3 minus 13 equals a times 0 plus b times 2 times 3 minus 1. Okay? That means that I have 10 equals 0 plus, uh, this is b times 5, so 5b. That makes b equal to 2. So I can substitute that back in. So that's how I'm going to find the value for b. I can do the exact same idea for the value of a. So now I'm going to let x be equal to a half. If I let x equal to b to a half, if I let x equal a half, that's going to cause the term with b to go to 0, and that's what I want. So I'm going to go 1 half minus 13, so I'm plugging x is equal to 1 half into the whole equation, equals a times a half minus 3 plus b, and this factor by the way that I chose x goes to 0. Okay, so let's do a little simplification. This is 26 over 2, so I have negative 25 halves. This is 6 halves, so I have a times 5 halves probably negative 5 halves, so that's negative a times 5 halves, and b is 0. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to multiply both sides by, five, by 2 fifths. I'm going to get that a is equal to um, 2 over 5 times 25 over 2, so a is equal to 5. And notice we had a negative and a negative, so they went away. What that means is that a is equal to 5, and b is equal to 2. So I can go back up to this statement right here, way at the top, and I can substitute. That means that x minus 13 divided by 2x minus 1 times x minus 3 is equal to, two, uh, so b, a is equal to 5, so 5 right, over 2x minus 1 plus 2 over x minus 3. Okay, And if you were to do this simplification backwards, if you were to find a common denominator, you would find that's equal to that. So basically, the, met the method of partial fractions is a way to decompose a fraction that already has a common denominator into two distinct uh, um, um, fractions. Okay, So why in the world did we do this in the first place? Well, we did it because we had a hard time figuring out how to integrate the left-hand side. But I'm going to argue that we're going to have an easier time integrating the right-hand side. Here was our original integral. Here was my partial fraction decomposition. So instead of integrating this, which I don't really know how to do, I'm going to integrate 5 over 2x minus 1 plus 2 over x minus 3, because those are the same thing. 
Now, this isn't so bad because this is basically a version of ln x. So this is going to be ln of the absolute value of 2x minus 1. But the chain rule says I have to divide by 2. So it's going to be 5 because this 5 here divided by 2. So the u substitution would yield that. And over here we have a 2. And we're going to have ln of x minus 3. And since x minus 3's derivative is just 1, I don't have to worry, or it's antiderivative, uh, I don't have to worry about a chain rule affecting the outcome here, plus c. And that is a solution using partial fractions. Okay, uh, the video's already gotten fairly long at this point, so we're going to stop it right now. But um, I do want you to attempt one problem before uh, class next time. Here it is. 5x minus 1 divided by x squared plus x minus 2. I want you to decompose that into partial fractions. I've already shown you the first step of the, uh, the partial fra fraction decomposition. It's up to you now to find the appropriate values for a and b. Okay, So please start with this uh, uh, partial fractions decomposition and try to find the values of a and b. Good luck. Thanks so much.